So I fixed my saw. This is another in the wood milling series. So my friend Gabe, who I cut up the previous maple tree with, had a big walnut tree in his backyard. And it had a huge trunk that rotted out on the inside and the tree finally fell over. So the trunk didn't have any salvageable wood, but it left two big branches that were big enough to get plenty of nice walnut out of. So we started by cutting them into pieces that we could mill as they were a little bit bent and they had branches that had, that had come off of them. So we found four sections that we could cut the two branches into. So we started by doing the first pass on two of the branches and we made one cut and we got to a little past the middle and the saw stopped. It was running but the, the chain wouldn't move. And it turned out that one of the bolts that holds the bar on had come out and completely disappeared. We, we had dropped it somewhere. So right off the bat, I started dealing with the saw. Even though I'd, I'd gone and gotten a new saw and this was not supposed to happen. So we went and got a new bolt and I tightened it down a lot more than I had. And after that, it, it seemed to work just fine. So we milled a second piece and got that started. And then we went back to the, to the first piece and started doing the actual milling. And Gabe wanted a, a big thick piece. So we did that and then we cut off an, a slab from that piece. So we didn't do two of the sections that we got ready to mill. So there'll be a, another time that we'll, we'll go and mill those up. The other section we milled and I took and we got, we got six slabs out of out of this piece. And this saw is definitely cutting a lot quicker than the other saw. I think part of that is it's, it's got a nice sharp chain on it, but also just the, the saw runs faster and it's just new and better and <laughs> it just works a lot better. And it's nice when you can, you can pull on it and it starts on the first pull. So this is sped up just a little bit. And then the very last piece we cut in half just so we could move it. So this is the truckload of wood I brought home, and then I had to get it out of the truck and stacked. So I wanted to do two things. I wanted to cut off part of one of the ends of each of the pieces because it was, it was rotting. And I wanted to flip the whole stack over so that the, the last piece that was on the ground when we finished would be on the top when I stacked everything. So I pulled each slab out onto a sawhorse, and then that let me cut the end off. One thing I've found is that most circular saws will cut to a maximum depth of two and a quarter inches. So if you do your slabs at two inches or two and a quarter inches, you can just cut them with the circular saw, which is kind of nice, because you, you really can't cut something like this on the table saw or the radial arm saw, just because it's too, too big and heavy to move around. It's easier to, to leave, leave the wood in place and move the saw instead of leaving the saw in place and moving the wood. Now one of the ends I was trying to save as much as I could and trying to sort of cut around where it was rotted and it turned out in the end it, it just wasn't making a lot of sense so I just cut off the whole end and kept it simpler. So I had to move it off the sawhorses onto the ground and then move them from the ground into my final stack and I, and I put spacers in between each slab so that they'll have some air movement around the slabs and the spacers stack vertically over each other so that you're not putting stress into the into the wood and I painted the ends with wax emulsion paint hopefully it won't won't check too much last piece. So then you can sort of see the, the quicker version here. <laughs> and then I rested for a while. I think we watched Star Wars. 
during this time. <laughs> I went back out and put the, the last two pieces on the top. And this will just kind of help it help weight it down and help protect the wood from the from the sun and the rain. Now between two of the pieces that we slabbed, there was sort of an elbow in the branch. And instead of just cutting it off, I made two cuts and I cut out that bend where there was a big knot as well. And I figured I could use that piece as a, a turning blank to make, make two bowls. So I cut that in half there on site, mostly so we could move it into the truck. So then I brought the pieces home and I, I cleaned them up a little bit and got them a little smaller and a little rounder so they'd fit on the lathe. And I turned one of the blanks right away. And this is probably one of the, the bigger things I've turned so far. And I think if I was going to get a bigger lathe, I would need to get a crane because this is about as much as I can lift to put onto the, onto the lathe. And it was a little funny. I got it round, but it still wasn't balanced. I think maybe because the wood had sat for about a year, the, the water had moved to one side. So the, the wood was actually weighted differently on each side. So even though it was round, I couldn't turn the speed up on the lathe very high, or it would, it would wobble. So it was slow going, turning out the inside of the, of the bowl. But it worked. This piece of wood has a lot of defects in it, but I think that'll make for a nice bowl in the end. Some of the patches are, are really beautiful. And you can see all the chips I made. <laughs> I cleaned it out. and I put some of the same wax paint on this as well. It'll dry really slowly and hopefully won't, won't crack too much more than it already is. And it'll probably sit for a year or two and I'll finish it. Thanks for watching.